so we're Pont de Can I take your order, please? Um, how do you first become interested in boxing? Basically, I was I was brought up in in, in a rough area, um, and I was very competitive as a, as a youngster growing up, and I found myself involved in, in a lot of street fights. Um, so one day I just decided to to go along to the boxing gym. I really wanted to box and, and channel my aggression in, into into a controlled environment, which was the, the boxing gym, rather than you know on street corners. And when I was 11 years of age, stepped foot into the gym and I've never looked back. Uh, which gym did you first go to? I first stepped foot into Joe Calzaghi's gym, uh, the old blue shed. Uh, it was a couple of miles from where I lived. So, uh, you know, I stepped into that gym and um, enjoyed it from day one. I got the buzz for boxing, you know, the smell, the, the roughness of the gym. And it was just a proper boxing gym. And, uh, you know, I've just taken it from there. Did you realise from an early age as an amateur that you were a bit special compared to the other boxers, to contemporaries? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I definitely had a, a mental edge um, over my competitors. I was very dedicated, very hungry. Um, and even before I had my first amateur fight, I said that I would be world champion uh, to myself. Uh, and I told my dad that. And it's, uh, you know, who we are today, uh, fighting for the world title, so, you know, I, I knew. And, and from my performances, from my early amateur fights, my first 15 fights, I think I stopped my first 13 opponents, so I knew I had something special there. How did the other people in the gym at the time take to you, uh, saying you're going to be the world champion, you're going to achieve great things, did they take you seriously or do you think um, you were... I wasn't a that, joker. I was. I was not that verbal in the gym, to be honest. I kind of kept myself to myself. Um, I knew where I was going, and I just wanted to sh show show that in my performances. Um, you know, whether it be in sparring, or whether it would be you know in in the actual fight. That's the place to do it. You know, I was obviously had that cockiness as a as a young lad growing up, um, but you know, I, I suppose you've got to have that to to make it to the top, really. As a young boxer, who do you look up to? Which boxers do you watch on TV and say, I, I want to be like him? And that's why I want to be, when I'm world champion, I want to be like that boxer. Growing up, uh, Joe Calzaghi was an inspiration. Being a, a, a local Valley boy like myself, brought up in similar surroundings. And also Oscar De La Hoya from America. Um, he was a great fighter, the full package really. You know, he could talk well, um, he had the right image. As, as well as being a, an outstanding fighter. So would you consider De La Hoya or Calzaghi as your favourite fighter of all time, or is it a guy from uh, past generations? Um, I, I'd, I'd probably say uh, Calzaghi and, and, and De La Hoya, you know, they, as, as a, the modern day fighters, um, because I, I kind of you know, haven't got much uh, knowledge of, of past boxers, to be fair. Um, so yeah, uh, Carl Zagg and De La Hoya, um, I like their styles um, and their determination. And uh, I've got, you know, I've got similar traits. And, um, I'm going to be a world champion of my own. I suppose it must be an advantage for you as a young boxer, so being have a, a top quality sparring partner like Joe Calzaghi available to you in the gym. Yeah, it was great. Um, he was world champion at the time. I was a young professional coming through, sparring lots of rounds with him. Um, yeah, it was a great experience, and uh, that experience will. Uh, put me in good stead for the future. A lot of boxers turn professional because they don't have much choice. They haven't got many options in life. You as being well documented, you got a highly educated, you got a degree in maths from Cardiff University. So a lot of people would, would ask the question, why have you chosen one of the hardest sports of all to make your profession? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I could have a comfortable life outside boxing, uh, just use my academic background to get myself a, a nice job, well paid, um, but I have a dream and the dream is to become world champion uh, boxing, so until I achieve that dream, the mission goes on on May 21st, um, I'm getting closer to that dream, so you know, it's a hard sport, a brutal sport in fact, but I love it, you know, I, I just, I think naturally I'm 
deep down I'm, I'm, I'm a fighter at heart so you know that's why I've chose boxing and that's why you know I've, I've decided to continue with it. Do you wake up some mornings and think when there's ice on the ice on the cars and there's frosty and snow mm. do you think do I really want to go for a run this morning? <laughs> yeah. I could just be an accountant now or a lawyer yeah, yeah. or a solicitor earning excellent yeah. money without getting punched in the face. Many without a time. Go out freezing cold. Yeah, many a time. You know, it's, it, boxing is it's a difficult sport. It's a solitary environment. Um, you wake up some mornings and because it, it can be extra difficult for me because I've got something else in life rather than solely boxing. So sometimes, you know, I, I think, you know, here we go. I've got to get switched on mentally, ready to push your body again in training. Um, where I could have a comfortable life, earning nice money outside the sport, but you know, that that sport at the, at the top level, that's the pressure you face, um, that's the difficulties. But overcoming those, it's just such a great feeling. Um, and overall, I just love the buzz of, of pushing my body, of winning, remaining undefeated, and becoming a champion. I mean, a lot of boxers speak of a burning desire deep inside the heart. Is that what you feel? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think the the fact that underlines that is is 21 fights I'm beaten now. Picked up the British Commonwealth and European titles. Age just 20, 23 at the time. Um, I'm now just turned 24, fighting for the world title. So you know that's because of my burning desire to succeed to beat anyone who's put in front of me. In 2008, you made the decision to leave the Calzaghe gym. I mean, how difficult a decision was that at the time? It was difficult because myself, Joe and Enzo Calzaghe built up a, a good relationship. Um, it was good friends as well as, you know, uh, gym mates. So it was difficult to to part with them. And, and obviously, I stayed with Frank Warren which you know has proved to be a great move. Um, you know he's got me some some fights, and, and I've had to go out there and win and take my opportunities, um, which was a challenge. But I've stepped up to the plate. Um, so yeah, overall it was it was difficult, but you know it was the right decision, and and you know they know that as well now. Do you still maintain con contact with Joe and Enzo yeah. Calzaghe? Do you yeah, still consider yeah. them friends? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, me and Joe, we're still friends. We go out quite regular, actually. Um, you know, the, the respect between us. He's, he's got, you know, I've got the utmost respect for Joe. And likewise, he has a tremendous amount of respect for me. So, you know, it's, we're still very close. After you, Enzo Calzaghe... Sorry, we were there again. Uh, uh, who made the decision to have your dad, Vince, as your trainer after you left Enzo Calzaghe? Me, yeah, it was it was my decision to to have my dad to to train me. Um, it made sense, you know, because basically my dad has always been there since I, I first stepped foot in the gym. He's always been behind the scenes, watching, watching me train, keeping an eye, keeping an eye on me. And back at home, he's always done extra bits of training with me. Um, those extra bits which which help you become a champion. Um, so. When I was obviously split, uh, or you know, or we parted ways with Enzo Calzaghe, it made sense to to go with my dad, you know, and we brought in my my old amateur trainer as well, Alan Davis, and we formed a great team, great combination of styles, um, and it's really blended well. A lot of people sort of say in boxing that a father and son team don't mix. There's a lot of examples: Roy Jones with his yeah. dad. Um, Shea Mosley was an on-off relationship with his dad. Yep. Um, so what are the advantages and disadvantages, would you say, to having your dad as your trainer? It's difficult, there's no doubt. It's very difficult. Um, it can you know, uh, cause a lot of conflict at times. I, th I think because it's such an intense sport um, and there's such a lot of pressure in boxing, especially amongst the best fighters, that's, they are the ones who, who have the most pressure because they put themselves under pressure because they want to be the best, they want to win. Um, and with that comes pressure, expectation. And with a father and a son, 
you both kind of feel that pressure uh, because you know it's your dad and it's his son going into battle. He wants to make sure you're hundred percent at all times, um, and by doing that, he's got to push you in the gym. And sometimes fighters react against that because when they push in their body, and you've got your father trying to push you even more through that threshold, you get a reaction sometimes. But you know, overall, it's um, you know, it's a great combination. So sometimes the lines when when your dad's in the gym with you. Do you look at him as he is he a trainer, or is he still your dad, or is there times when the lines become a little mm. bit blurred? I think years ago, it, it, when I was a youngster, it was you know it was more father and son type. You know it was, it was difficult then, but as you get older, um, get more mature, you realise this is you know this is boxing. You're in the real world now, become more professional. Um, you just you know, you you're in the real world, so you've got you've got to put that separation there. This is this is this is brutal sport. This is training, so just I suppose you've just got to get on with it, really. You won most of your early professional fights on points. Yep. A lot of people are sort of saying you're a good boxer. If the clever, he's a good boxer, but he hasn't got much power. He relies on his uh, footwork, his speed, his, his boxing uh, brain. But then, as you sort of stepped up against better opponents, you started knocking guys out and stopping them. Yeah. Where, where did that power come from? Um, well, I, I turned pro uh, ju- just after my 18th birthday, um, which was very young. You know, I was only welterweight then. I was weighing in 10 stone, I think 10 stone 10. Um, so I was a very immature professional fighter. So, you know, it, that obviously I was, I was stepping in to fight men then, experienced pros. So it was difficult to to actually knock those guys out mm. at the time, you know, considering I didn't have the my full man strength then. Um, but the best thing I done was 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 remain undefeated and and go the distance because now I've got tremendous amount of experience, a lot of rounds under my belt, um, and it was inevitable as I started going up through the weights, getting stronger, becoming more mature. Um, it was inevitable that I was going to start knocking these guys out. Um, I suppose maybe it might have actually worked as an advantage for you, like you said. Yeah, I, I, you built up a lot of rounds, whereas guys like Tyson, yeah. and Nigel Ben, they knock yeah. guys out early. Yeah. They didn't have the experience of going a few rounds. Yeah, I, I think it's definitely an, an advantage. I, I, you know, I've gained valuable experience, invaluable experience boxing in front of big crowds on the undercards, went the full distance. Um, so I knew what it was like to. To, to go to the trenches and and experience the rounds, experience the atmosphere. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely worked in my favour, and that's why I'm on the fringe of a world title now at 24. At times, it appears you'd rather stand and fight out in the trenches, as you mentioned, yeah. rather than using your boxing skills. That's always the way it's going to be as well. You know, I've got no no plan in changing that. Um, I'll box at times and. In nearly all my fights, I'll probably get in and, and go to town and, and have a good tear-up with my opponents. That's what I love. And the reason I can do that is because when I do it, no many opponents can, can live with that um, ferocity that I fight at. So, you know, I kind of enjoy that and I want to maintain that. It's a, it's a fan-friendly style. Mm. They, they seem to love it. Um, the only disadvantage is that people say you're not going to have a long career if you if you fight like that. But six more fights, um, remain undefeated. I'd be happy. I'd be happy. I retire. <laughs> <laughs> and in your fight with Karim Morat, your corner were begging you almost to sort of box. Yeah. And Frank Warren was quite animated ringside, <laughs> banging the ring up and down in your corner, screaming yeah. "Box, Nathan, box!" Yet every time you went out there, yeah. <clears throat> and then straight back in the trenches. Yeah. Well, the the only. Uh, People that had belief, I suppose, 100% belief in in that fighting style was myself, my dad, and Alan, my trainers, because we're in the gym all the time together. So they know what I can do. I know what I can do. Um, obviously, for the guys outside, they was a little bit cautious and, and wary because they thought it was crazy the way I boxed. But I knew, I knew I had to fight. I knew I had it wrapped up. You know, there was, was no way was he going to beat me. Um, 
That's, you, that's the attitude I had, so that's why I fought like that. Do you feel um, that if during a fight, a bit like when Joe Calzaghe fought Kessler, Calzaghe was taking a few hard shots early on and he was able to switch style after three or four rounds, yeah. do you feel you'd be able to do that if it came to it? Yeah. As you yeah. step up against better opponents? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, under the pressure, I, I'll, that's when I'll, I'll pull out you know, what plan A, plan B. Um, obviously, Murat... I just needed that style. Um, as I, you know, maybe in the future, when you come across different styles, I'll need to box more. So I'll, I'll show that side of me. Um, but, you know, that I'll decide that in, actually in the fight, you know, what, what, where the, what the opponent's got and what I feel like doing, really. In May, you got your world title shot against Jürgen Bremer for the WO Light Every title. How much do you know about Bremer? I mean, he's not a big name in Britain. Do you study tapes of him? Do you, um, I, you know, I, I don't necessarily study my opponents, but I've seen clips of him on the internet. Um, he's, a, he's good. You know, he's a strong fighter. Very good puncher. Good KO puncher. Very technical. Um, toughest fight of my life. Um, but, you know, we, we're going to see what I'm made of now. Um, you know, am I really capable of becoming world champion? Let's, you know, let's get a fight on and let's see. I can't wait. What was your first imp impressions of Bremer when you met him at your press conference yesterday? Stern, very stern character. Seems the type, you know, not much, you know, not much talk, just goes on with business. Um, so he's the type who doesn't get phased by anything. So, you know, we'll, uh, I'm sure it's like myself, you know, nothing really, really phases me in the boxing ring. So let's get it on and have a great fight. For the last few months in the build-up to your fight with Bream, I've been working with Darren Wilson, your new strength and conditioning coach. Yeah. What type of things have you been doing with Darren? Uh, basically, we we kind of added that into our training now. Uh, I think it's 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 that extra element which can add a couple of percent, you know, to to my performance. Um, Bream is a strong guy, so we've added in a little bit of strength training. To, you know, to deal with these strong guys as such. Um, so Darren has been doing a lot of strength work with me. Um, basically, just oh, total body workout really. Um, a lot of circuits, um, and with you know, with a with a bit, a bit of weights. So you know, that would be uh, hopefully evident on the night. After you beat Bremer, what are your future ambitions in boxing? I mean, light heavyweights traditionally yeah. have always moved up to heavyweight. Would you yeah. look at moving to cruiserweight, then yeah. heavyweight, or maybe just cruiser? Um, I think once I get this world title, it opens uh, an awful lot of doors for me. I can possibly... Um, th this fight is, is vital, really. Once, once I win this, I can hopefully go on to, to unify the division. And uh, I think cruiserweight is, is definitely an option. You know, I've got the, the height. Um, I'm getting, you know, bigger with every fight. So cruiserweight is definitely an option for the future. Would you ever consider moving up to heavyweight? Do you feel you've got the frame and the size for it? I think once, once I'm in the cruiserweight division um, in, in, in the near future, the next stop is heavyweight then. And I think... Once you're a cruiserweight, um, and you know, being, if if you was a big cruiserweight, then heavyweight is definitely possible. Um, so, you know, that's that's an exciting prospect really for for the the future. I mean, at the moment, the light heavyweight the light heavyweight division is probably as, as good as it's been with a number of exciting boxers. It's been for years, guys like Hopkins, Pascal, Chad Dawson, Tavoris Cloud. Can you imagine yourself in the mix with those guys? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, I've seen these guys fight, great fighters. And they're the fights I want. Uh, to get those fights, I've got to win against Jürgen Bremer. Um, I've got to get through that tough test. But if I do, those fights will happen. Apart from yourself, obviously, who do you rate as the number one light heavyweight in the world right now? Who do you think is the number one guy? I like Hopkins. I think Hopkins is still, is still you know, a class act. When, when, when he puts his mind to it um, and when he needs to pull out a performance I think he produces the goods um, 
you know, and Tavoris Cloud is dangerous. Uh, Jurgen Bremer, he's he's one of the most dangerous in there. Um, and I think I'm I'm the, the the youngster coming through who could be the best of the lot, really. You mentioned Hopkins. I mean, who, who do you think won his fight with Pascal? Was it a lot of controversy? Yeah, Most I, people I, thought Hopkins won. I did. I, th- I thought Hopkins won the fight, uh, despite the knockdowns. I thought he'd come back and, and dominated in the end. Um, you know, he, he just showed what he can do. You know, when he needs to put out the performance. So, yeah, I thought I thought he, he boxed great, actually. Who do you think will win the rematch between Hopkins and Pascal? Do you think Pascal's going to up his game or change his tactics mm. or click on? Hopkins uh, improved what he done last time. Do you think? From, from the the way Hopkins dominated after the knockdowns, I think, I think he'll win the fight. I think Hopkins will want to win the rematch. Um, Pascal's the younger, fresher guy, but I think Hopkins he showed that, you know, he had his number. Would you like to fight Hopkins in the future? Yeah, yeah, that would be a great fight. Um, he's an American legend, real boxing legend, so that would be great. Um, Know what a fight that would be. As I'm sure you know, Enzo Macarelli is making a comeback light heavyweight. Yeah. Um, already the internet is full of rumours about yourself yeah. possibly fighting Enzo in a, your first title defence here in Wales. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about that? Um, obviously, he's decided to come down to light heavyweight. Um, probably, you know, because he thinks I'm going to be world champion now, and you know, he probably wants wants a shot at at, at the the world the world title. You know, he's he's obviously not gonna get the opportunity of cruiserweight, so he you know, being Welsh, probably hope that he's gonna get the fight with me. Um but I think provided I beat Bremer, you know, I've got you know, a, a lot of big fights yeah. out there for me, you know, like the American guys. They are gonna be on my radar firstly because they're gonna be the big money fights. Um you know, but if Mark had earned his position if he, you know, he, he's obviously got to get in, into position to to be worthy of fighting me. You know, I'm the champion. Or I will be the champion. So he's got to prove he's ready to fight me. And um, if it happens in the future, it happens. You know, I'm, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm still going to remain undefeated. I'm, you know, I'm I'm going to be the champ. Do you see yourself as the new pride of Wales? As now that Kalzagi's retired. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, you know, there's, I'm the one, um, obviously pushing for the the world title now. Um, so, yeah, I, su- I suppose I'm in pole position to do that, really. Um, which is, you know, it's a, a little bit of pressure with it, but I'm kind of enjoying that, really. Um, do you do feel pressure on yourself now as, as you become more famous and you're on television, television shows, question of sport? Do you feel pressure on yourself to be a role model for young people in Wales and, and Britain? Yeah, there's 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 an element of pressure, um, but I thrive on that um, expectation as well, which is, which is nice. Um, so I just got to go out there and you know keep focused uh, and keep producing the goods. Really, there's a couple of big fights coming up in the next few months. Um, who do you think is going to win the showdown between David Hay and Klitschko? That was finally um, going to happen. The more the more I look at that fight, the more I think David Hayes could do this. Um, naturally, I like the guy coming up, very explosive, um, very ex- you know, good explosive power, fast. I think that could trouble the Klitschko's. Um, they're very robotic, but you know they're super strong guys and they're good athletes as well. So, and they can hit. Um, Likewise, can David A. So, but the more I look at it, I, th- <laughs> I, I, I really think he's got a chance. Um, I, I probably put my money on on Hay. Actually, I'm going to go for the outsider. Yeah. Hay by stoppage. I think if he catches Klitschko, um, yeah, he, he, he could take this guy out there. Another fight which may or may not happen is Mayweather Pacquiao. Who do you think would win that? All along, I've. I've kind of said Pacquiao. Um, I think he's more active than Mayweather. Mayweather obviously has, has long breaks after the fight. I think classier fight there is, is no doubt Mayweather. You know, he's he's just a class act. Um, his boxing skills are, are tremendous. But 
I think with Pacquiao's being more active, um, I think he'll just take the fight to Mayweather, and and you know could get a, a points victory. It's maybe a bit of a, <coughs> it's maybe a bit of an unfair question, but who would win if Nathan Cleverly fought Joe Calzaghe at light heavyweight? <laughs> That's a difficult question. <laughs> well, yeah, we kind of difficult difficult to answer that one in it, you know, because of obviously my respect for Joe. And respect for me is, is uh, should you say it'd be a close is, fight? Is, yeah, no doubt. You know, it'd be it'd be a great fight, wouldn't it? You know, similar, both warriors, um, both you know, kind of got that winner's mentality, so that you know, be tremendous. But you know, I think it'd be a a bit harsh to to answer that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nathan, thank you for taking the time to speak with us today, and good luck for you. We'll take the fight in the twenty first of May. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Thank you, thank you Nathan. Cheers, you, mate. I'd want to just add, take a few pictures of um, yeah, just the uh, well, that's it. New basically. So